Hello, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. I'm recording here in Washington, D.C., which was the site of that unspeakable tragedy yesterday. Uh, just surreal uh, experience there, the shooting here in, in uh, our nation's capital city. We thank God that uh, the, the damage was not as bad as it really very easily could have been. And we're, our, our thoughts and prayers are with the families and, and uh, those who were, were hit and we, we uh, for a whole lot of reasons, uh, pray not just for their recovery, but for um, an end to this kind of senselessness. I uh, am speaking at a conference here in D.C. later today and, and spent a lot of time this morning in some different research projects that really kind of informed what I want to talk about a little this week. Um, the written dividendcafe.com uh, that, that hopefully you will also take the time to look at has a couple charts that center around our theme, which is the present investor complacency around risk. Um, which is to say that we think there's a very high complacency, a high level of apathy. And, and uh, historically, this is at rather interesting levels. The S&P 500 on the year, from its high point that it, took, that it had in the year to whatever low point it had, that is a term we call drawdown, was 2.8%. The highest peak to trough drop that the market has seen all year was 2.8%. Uh, just silly low levels of downside volatility. The last time that we saw something this low was 1995, okay, 22 years ago. And at that point, it took all year to even have a 2.5% market drop. So the reality is that even if you take recessionary years out of the consideration, those years that experience 20 and 30 percent plus type drops in bear markets and just look at normalized market years the vast majority of which are positive from the beginning of the year to the end of the year the reality is the 10 to 15 percent drawdowns in the middle of the year are the norm uh, average levels of market downside volatility so we're in unprecedentedly low levels of market angst a lot of that driven by uh, the rational um, optimism that comes from earnings acceleration. A lot of it driven by the fact that global reflation has indeed accelerated coming out of a couple years of very tepid global economic growth conditions in both emerging markets, Western Europe, uh, the, in China, the slowdown issues taking place there, and even in Japan, has, which has seen a slight uptick. So there is reason that the markets are doing well. There are reasons that volatility is low. But then we get to what to make of it. And I combine low levels of market volatility with extremely low credit spreads in the high yield bond market and conclude very reasonably that investors are not very fearful of uh, risk right now, that there's too much complacency. The problem then is what to do about that. We've eliminated our high yield bond position uh, from an asset allocation standpoint and most balanced portfolios. That lowers risk to some degree. Uh, we're being very defensive in our equity positioning. However, the reality is, is that out of 1995, you had a 20% gain in the market in 96, 97, 98, 99. Now that was the biggest bull market in history, but my point is trying to time around when investor apathy comes back to haunt, it's not very easy to do. So I, I think that a wise and appropriate to a specific investor timeline, risk profile, uh, liquidity need, investment objective, a, a tailored asset allocation to an individual investor is going to prove to be a far superior strategy to dealing with the realities of investor complacency than attempting to time and ent our entries and exits around various positions. Um, the market as I record this is down a bit on, on Thursday. It was up a bit Wednesday. Not a real momentous week. We certainly are watching the uh, events in UK and that election result. Um, there's some really interesting commentary on right-wing versus left-wing populism in, in our written uh, commentary this week. But um, other than that, we wanted to give you those comments on investor apathy. We continue to reinforce our belief and exposure alternatives to diversify 
other risks and then to uh, st stay very cognizant of the merits of dividend growth investing. Uh, the technology high growth, high beta stuff is leading the downside volatility here right now. They had a, the worst two days of the year earlier in the week. So um, those are some of the things going on in the market. Please reach out with any questions or comments. Thank you for listening to DividendCafe.com.